Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Daniel Hood Roofing. Winter is here. That means cold, wet weather. Boy, does it ever. I'm, I'm going to have to go out and check my roof uh, after last night's hail and deluge. Uh, you may want to do the same, but if I check my roof, I'm not getting up on a ladder. I'm calling Daniel Hood Roofing to come check my roof. They could do the same for you. And boy, they like battling with the insurance companies. If they say no, Daniel and his team can find a way to get them to say yes. But don't wait to repair or replace your roof until after it becomes an emergency situation. Call Daniel Hood Roofing this week. You will not regret it, I promise you. DanielHoodRoofing.com. All right. Last Sunday morning, I told you that I had heard rumors, rumblings that Tennessee could maybe wind up in the Citrus Bowl against Iowa. And then I said, I don't believe it, but if it happens, you heard it here first. I wish I had believed my source. I will from now on. Uh, Tennessee goes to play Iowa in Orlando. I saw some people on Twitter saying you can't spill citrus without UT. That no longer applies. That was when you were good. It's been 22 mm -hmm. years since you've been to that bowl. That is a fine bowl for an 8-4 and four team. It's probably better than what you deserve. It's it's. LSU played there earlier this year. That's why you're there, but that's okay. Eight and four, Orlando, good trip. You get an Iowa team that simply can't score the football. I mean, that's that's a great, that is a great matchup on paper. Jimmy, I've heard people all week saying, "Oh, this is a layup." Looks good on paper, but is it a layup? I wouldn't go layup, but I do think uh, it's a good matchup for Tennessee because. Iowa can't score, and Tennessee typically scores a touchdown on their first drive of the game, and that might be all they need. <laughs> all you need. So, all you need. Yeah, 7-3 maybe. Uh, and I also think Iowa is such an unattractive opponent, that might be one reason for your poll results about the Citrus. Could be. Having said that, uh, now Iowa's defense is so good that, heck, that their, offense, their defense may outscore their offense against Tennessee. Who knows? But I think this will be a low-scoring game, and any time it's a low-scoring game, it may be hard to pull away from Iowa. So I don't consider the layup, but I do like the matchup for Tennessee. Anyone? You Anyone? could not get a bigger contrast in tempos <laughs> than you find in this game. Uh, so the, your one concern is, does Iowa shorten the game? Are they able to convert on third down and then they suddenly have the football the entire game, which a couple of teams earlier this year were able to do against Tennessee. But overall, I agree with Jimmy. I think fast start, they can't. They can't come back from too far down at all. So I, I like Tennessee pretty easy also. You better take care of the football. You don't want to give them easy easy possessions or pick sixes or special teams touch. Don't give their offense any help. I'm working away to the guy who's chuckling, Josh. So uh, we did bring up some of the offensive issues that Iowa has this week on the radio and uh, had a few immediate messages that came in of, well, this will be the week we make their quarterback look like he's right. Joe Montana and a Heisman contender and all that. So uh, that, that fear of what could go wrong against yeah. what is a terrible <laughs> offense. Uh, if Tennessee plays mistake-free, then it, it should be. And they typically layup. do in terms yeah. of turnovers. Yeah, but there is also the question of, okay, what is the mindset? How into the game are the players when a year ago a lot of these players were going to the Orange Bowl? And this time they might not look at it as as big of a deal. So if they go out there and make mistakes, then – yeah, I was all of a sudden can have a chance to win the game. What does everybody else see that I miss? Because Tennessee's offense has not been that good. Iowa's defense has been very, very good. So I think, yeah, Iowa's offense is probably not going to do much against Tennessee. Yeah, I don't think Tennessee's offense is going to do anything against Iowa. They haven't been that good. They weren't good against Texas A&M. They weren't good for a half against Florida. They weren't good well, for a whole game, basically, against Florida. They weren't good for a half against Alabama. They weren't good against Georgia. They weren't good against Missouri. Mm -hmm. Do those teams all have defenses better than Iowa? I don't think so. I think this is going to be one of the better defenses you've seen, and your offense isn't that good. I'll say this, Bob. Tennessee's seen good defenses. Iowa hasn't seen a tempo like Tennessee brings to the okay, table. Okay, but your tempo didn't do anything for you this year. I, I think they were better, especially down the field passing later in the year. Against Vandy and against UConn. Well, here, let me throw this out. Let me throw this out. This is, this is the concern. I brought this up last week. We, we went through the numbers, and we kind of condensed it, and everybody kind of agreed that, yeah, you can trace this back to the deep shots downfield. You went from 40 passes of 30 yards or more last year to 18 this year, the fewest ever in a Josh Heupel team. So that's three at UT, three at uh, UCF, and two as an offensive coordinator at Missouri. Only 18 deep balls of 30 yards or more. You know how many deep balls of 30 yards or more Iowa's giving up this year? 12. Eight. That is the lowest number in America. 
Lowest number in the country. They also lead the nation in punts. But that would I, – I, yeah. I get it. I get it. I'm just – I'm kind of – I under think Tennessee head. wins. I think it's a great matchup yeah. because they don't score. Right. I'm closer to Bob than the rest of you, I think, because – I'm not so sure Tennessee's going to put up huge amounts of points. I can yeah. see Tennessee. Now maybe you I win, can see 17 and, and to 7. I pick 7 to 13. 3. What's the deal? There you go. Okay. <laughs> They could no, win. They I can see this being an A and M type game. Tennessee well, too. Yeah. I do too. Tennessee sure. can be unimpressive on offense and win by multiple touchdowns. So yeah. Oh, wow, the, the confidence wow. oozing. Me and Vince are going to be making wagers in the parking lot <laughs> when the show is over. Well, yes, it could. And now, if you listen, you can hear Chuck jumping in his car to somehow drive over and get a piece of it. I plan on being a little bit closer to that new boat. <laughs> okay. Tennessee still has opt out questions that have to be answered. Right. Sure. Some key players. Of course, too. Iowa will too. I'm sure. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't checked the Iowa portal yet. <laughs> All right, very good. When we come back, let's continue. Look, this, this feeds into the next discussion, which comes, carries over from last week. Uh, when we come back, let's continue to talk about whether or not Tennessee, let's talk 2024 balls. Is Tennessee closer to a 10-win team or a 7-win team? We're going to cut out the middle ground there and make it a tougher question. Come on back on the Sports Source. Yeah, you better watch out. You better not cry. You better 